All right, folks. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We're getting started quick today. So, for those of you guys wondering what's going on, Creative Assembly is doing their official gameplay reveal for Total War Hammer 3. In fact, let's switch on over to that. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and make this full screen here so we don't have to read the chat. Um, but essentially, what's happening, you are living under a rock and you don't know, today is the gameplay reveal for Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, Creative Assembly kindly told me that I could restream their stream, provide a little bit of commentary, and then in about an hour or so, uh, I will be premiering my own gameplay as well. I had the opportunity to play a bit, so we'll be showcasing that here shortly. Yeah, about a minute to go, so welcome Tamatan in the house. Rubber Duck of War, Sebastian, what's up guys? Good to see you all. Got a handful here, chilling and chatting. <clears throat> so eventually, yeah, I will be getting to my own gameplay and commentary and everything again in about an hour or so, but... Yeah. If any of you guys are watching this live, I'll, of course, be on a slight delay because I'm watching, I'm doing a stream of a, you know, stream, so... Anyway. Hype! I am so hyped, guys. I am super, super hyped for this. I've been waiting for quite some time. About the background noise, my cat is, uh... Trying to attack my headphones a little bit. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's, uh, just check the volume levels here. Oh, jeez. Okay. Get this uh, hack YouTube music for just a minute here. Let me know how the audio levels are, guys. I'm looking here, but it seems like... I want it to be loud enough for you guys to be able to hear, but I also want to be heard as well. But here we go, okay. It's time! Officially! It's here! Welcome, Nate. Good to see you. I'm Gareth Edmondson, Studio Director at Creative Assembly. Thank Hi, Gareth. In just a few minutes' time, the amazing teams working on Total War Warhammer 3 will share with you some exciting updates on the development. Oh, there's, it looks oh, like we got a five-minute timer here. Okay. To reflect on the past year at Creative Assembly. Okay, so we're going to be doing a little bit of a film about the past year for the next five minutes. Hey, something just came through. the global pandemic. And I'd like to thank our incredible support and IT teams here. Oh, I should probably pull up Streamlabs. Give me just a second, guys. ...to move all our global operations to be fully remote March last year. Yet, we did it, and we got our teams up and running and working from home within a few days. In fact, during the last year, whilst working remotely, we've grown by 20% and recently announced the opening of a third development studio in the UK. Okay. we return to our studios later this year. So and Creative Assembly has managed to expand while also being on lockdown, which is pretty impressive, honestly, considering the, uh, you know, some of us would have liked to have had a faster pace of DLC releases, for sure. Um, the talent, passion, and creativity of our fantastic teams. We also... Countdown after countdown, I know, right? For example... Oh, uh, here we go. Tam and Ten with the 50. Holy cow. Let's start this off with some love for the channel. Been a while since I paid my peasant tax. Hope all is well in your end. Don't forget to hit that like button and enjoy. Thank you very much. I actually, I think the Streamlabs thing, unfortunately, might have been hidden, the notification on screen. Let me see if I can get that here. Continuing our efforts in our education work. By supporting Let me just check students. something here real Not quick, sorry. At home ...by providing laptops and also opening a new scholarship program with Teesside University for disadvantaged and minority students. And we continue to speak to thousands of students across the globe to support their career aspirations. As for All the right. reason why you're here today, well, we announced Total War Warhammer 3, the last installment of the trilogy back in February. The reception to our trailer has been incredible and we've loved seeing your reactions and comments. This month, we celebrate the five-year anniversary of the Total War Warhammer franchise. It's been an incredible journey. And All right. I'd like to thank our partners at Games Workshop and each... And yes, thanks, G-Dubs. Thanks, G-Dubs. So and honestly, huge thanks to CA. Course, I mean, while well, I'm, thank you, you know, talking over this guy, which is fine. This is not business. really what we're here for, but Kids Have Cafe, yeah. So stick uh, Chaos gets some range units to ease the burden on their infantry. The we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, honestly, the journey has been pretty incredible. And the fact that this has been so successful that, you know, um, 
that uh, Games Workshop is now returning to the old world. We're getting Kislev, Cafe, new factions, brand new lore for the old world that, you know, all the way you think about back in the, you know, 1980s, 1990s, early 2000s when Warhammer was in tabletop form. Like, who could have foreseen that this turn of events would come about, right? It's been, honestly, an incredible journey. So thank you all for being a part of it. Okay, so we got a little bit of stats. That's cool. I like that. <clears throat> of course, Norska, Wood Elves, showing us all the different releases over time. All the new content. Norska itself, too. I mean, that was kind of the herald of what was to come in terms of Creative Assembly expanding upon and sort of working with Games Workshop to create new content. Oof, I'm getting chills right now. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Attila is definitely a good time. It's it's its own it it's its own game. It's like uh, you know a grapefruit told war. Like comparing if if Warhammer is an apple, then Attila is a grapefruit. It's not for everyone, but for some people, it's actually quite enjoyable and probably good for you at the end of the day. Oh yeah, good old Vampire Coast, Tomb Kings, Vampire Coast, yeah, another kind of groundbreaking. Four million soldiers killed. <laughs> or is that four billion? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, of course, High Elves and Tyrion, who could have foreseen, like, the generic good guy. Kind of like Carl with Empire. Oh, Zotes. Maybe don't show the Zotes for some people. <laughs> uh, we've almost played a million hours, guys. I mean, almost 700,000, realistically, but... The sad thing is, is that I am a measurable percent of that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I am a non-point percentage of that total playtime. Uh... Need a life. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I mean, granted. Everyone, and thank you for joining oh, hi, Frankie. The first Total War Warhammer 3 Showcase event. I'm your host, Frankie Ward, and I'm here to give you an exclusive... Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm curious to see what they bring for, um, from, like, the Age of Sigmar-inspired stuff. Today, we'll be kicking things off with some brand new content before diving into an Let's see what we got. ...look at a Total <clears throat> War Warhammer 3 trailer and gameplay. We'll also be hearing from the developer... The trailer we already game, saw, but... <laughs> ...about the chaos you can expect to experience. So, without further delay, let's get started with a glimpse into the vision for Warhammer 3 from game director Ian Roxborough. Total War Warhammer 3 is I the conclusion to the Total War Warhammer Yes, trilogy. very clearly. The success of the first few games has actually enabled us to be far more ambitious and expand the scale of warfare like never before. Okay, when so what does that mean, though, is the question. When epic journey way back in 2012, we just looked at this incredibly rich and diverse amount of content that the Warhammer Fantasy universe has in it. Yes. And really wanted to make a game that contains yes. everything. But it was very apparent early on that there's no way we could put all that stuff in. And there's so much enough justice there's so much to put in right and in terms of the incredible it's i mean if you think about it this game, game so this game trilogy in total if you think about it as one game has been in development right, for like 10 years probably almost or more them, you know we'll like the opportunity to play one giant game at the end that combines all the content <laughs> all these games new content is just a five minute dom cold open <laughs> It's the game we want to play as developers, and it's the game we knew our fans would ultimately It's true. Play. It is true. It is a job. And it's also a passion. Like, yeah, I've enjoyed it so much. The Fantasy Battle Universe is such an incredibly rich and diverse world full of incredible monsters and, and giants. And so far, nothing new. And environments Keeping and my eye on the footage, magic, for sure. You name it, it's in there, and it just provides such a brilliant tapestry to design a total war game on. We can do things that we'd never ever be able to do in any other kind of environment and it's been such a pleasure to work with this ip and to bring new experiences to our players that they yes yes seen. all the self-congratulating and uh, you know thanking each other and our partners so now that you know what the vision is i think it's time to jump into our first exclusive segment here is the first in-engine cinematic trailer enjoy exclusive segment whoops <laughs> uh, yeah 
about that. Hey, here was the trailer from yesterday, though. We all get to watch it again live together. Kind of hilarious that CA leaked it on their own Facebook page, but happens. I know it's it's hilarious for some people. For some people, it's very much not hilarious and a massive headache. Like I typically, uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna not talk over this one because it's actually pretty good. Brothers and sisters betrayed. Was the meek cling to power? Is it just? I guess I will do a little bit of commentary. So those spear boys, you know, those guys holding spears. Does it make us weak? Interesting. This guy, too, is very interesting. The fact that he turns into just like a generic Chaos Lord makes me think that this guy might be a generic Kislev Lord, like the model that we saw at the beginning there. Talked a little bit about this yesterday on Felcon's livestream. Oh, yeah. Got some demons, got some. Born warriors. Okay, supposed to be Yuri. I mean, that makes sense, and I think... Is, is Yuri, like, a legendary character? I, I'm not really up on my kids' level lore, to be honest. I really should have invited the lore expert live on stream here. Ah, oh, yes. Very good. So, yeah. Some interesting stuff in that trailer. Wow. That had everything. Giant elemental bears, bloodthirsty demons, and one cold-blooded ice witch that you wouldn't want to mess with. And now for the moment you've been patiently waiting for. The world premiere of Total War Warhammer 3 gameplay. It's time to unshake Yeah, to me, Karate Khan, it looks like a... Looks like a tiger. Stuff. Like, it looks more feline than Ursign or K9. Catch my drift. Alright, let's have a look. This is the big Here stuff. Here it is, the first look at Total War Warhammer 3 gameplay. Today we'll be testing our metal in an epic new game mode. Survival oh yeah, battle. we got some blood Survival letters. battles drop us into the heart of enemy territory. To prevail, we'll need to deploy our defenses by spending supplies on a variety of barricades, projectile towers, traps, reinforcements and buffs. Yes. In this particular survival battle, we're taking the fight to Corn, seizing three victory points. Cold <laughs> Horse Archer as with Chaos the Mutations. Citadel and its gatekeeper as our goal, but our invasion into Corn's domain will be hard fought. We'll be repelling three waves of lesser demons before going toe to toe. All right, so we've got Katarine here. Those guys are called Ice Guards, as you might have saw there. I'm gonna throw that Ice Sheet if you begins, caught real quick. It's an area of effect debuff. Up. Some quick flanking um, and blast of Katarin's ice magic sets us up for a swift initial win. Yeah, if I if I'm swift now enough, I don't really want to. You know, I want to keep up with the live. And start our defensive preparations. So. We'll I might pause occasionally, just very briefly, for uh, UI elements to point some things out. But one thing you guys will notice here is the Winds of Magic is different, the way that it's displayed here. We'll get more into that in just a minute. So we can take control of and maintain the battle's flow. We'll place barricades on either side of the victory point and block off all easy routes up the main ramps. This will funnel the bulk of the demons towards the side ramps, where our Tsar guard will hold the line. Meanwhile, our towers... The Tsar Guard! Yes. These are the heavy right. infantry bros we've been seeing around. Here and one thing to notice as well is those Spear Boys in the trailer did not have those cloaks that the Tsar Guard have here. Oh yeah, Corn Warriors. They look so good, by the way. 
Can we just take a minute to appreciate how good these corn warriors look? I mean, the blood letters are nice, but I'm I'm a little bit more partial to the warrior side. Quickly slide between engagements to help ease the load on our Tsar guard. We'll use her devastating frost fang ability and heart of winter spell. A little bit of magic. Oh yeah, Katarine's animations are so tight. You see that? Can we get an instant replay on that real quick? Where's my mouse? Against such Hang on, hang on. We need it. We need an instant replay on that attack animation real quick. Yeah, knock him up into the air. Oh, so cool. Such insurmountable odds. Our warriors are sure to tire and take losses. Thankfully, we can keep our army fighting fit with the replenishments menu. Yep, you can restore health, get some extra wins of magic, restore vigor, restore Likewise, ability cooldowns. Improve a unit's performance with the oh yeah, the ice magic is, is awesome. Alright, yeah, so you can get but upgrades as well, and as you saw, you can also city. build towers and barricades, troops into the um, and summon reinforcements. So basically, with this, uh, with this battle... It's a survival battle, right? Um, Our defense is holding. Basically, you can... Reinforcements, but the you, as you move up, you capture these different capture points, and then that's what gives you the supplies. You saw that there, right? The, the capture, the capture point, you get the supplies, and then you spend those supplies from on these upgrades, you know, more troops, uh, towers. The towers are a big one. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but... We've survived the first wave and can press our invasion deeper into enemy territory. Oh yeah, the corn halberds, so cool. Of course, just get wrecked. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's just a little silly. I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it's just kind of hilarious watching her just just rolling around on the ice sheet. Oh yeah, this thing. <laughs> Speaking of rolling around on an ice sheet, we got the uh, Sisters of the North, is what I'm calling them for now. And then that cannon bear thing. Oh yeah, the gun axes. The gun axes. Oh yeah, I totally just passed right by those. But the gun axes are definitely a thing. I, I love it personally. I know I know some people aren't gonna like the gun axes, but I love it. I think it's a great kind of high fantasy deal. Oh, did you see that? Those are warriors of corn with dual weapons. So they're specifically not called corn berserkers, which I think is interesting. That that means we may see potentially a corn berserker unit as like a higher tier version of that. But if you saw it, was real quick. Popped up. I unfortunately did not pause in time, but you saw it did say Warriors of Corn with dual weapons, right? So, oh yeah, the ice weapons look amazing. The the effects definitely 10 out of 10. But where are Western defenses prevailing? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's kind of a callback to that the story of the bear in Poland, right? Who was like, was it in World War Two? I want to say that it was like helping an artillery crew like carry ammo, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, World War Two. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> oh yeah. A boiling moat. And tempt Korn's gatekeeper from his lair. Here we make our final push. Oh yeah. Tired of the map too. Can we just take a minute to appreciate how amazing this map looks? Like this is one thing I was super excited about in game three is that the designers can literally just go all out. Full on, you know, no holes barred. All in on the fantasy elements. And it's the environments... This one in particular that we've seen here, obviously, is just incredible. Despite Korn's overwhelming numbers, we're standing strong. Kislev's superior ranged capabilities mixed with the staunch bulwark of the Dark Guard and the capacity... Oh yeah, got some stakes there. Gotta, gotta get the stakes. Barricades. Oh yeah, the Skull Cannon too. That was a nice shot of the Skull Cannon firing. So this is two kind of single entity artillery pieces that we've seen so far. Ah, uh, Warbear Riders. We can unleash our Warbear Riders and other cavalry to wreak havoc in their flanks. 
Add the elemental bear's ranged elemental breath ability and a continuous oh, yeah. fire from our oh, yeah. units. <laughs> find ourselves oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The artillery bear. The, ba the bear born big boar. <laughs> An exalted bloodthirster, this greater demon of corn is war, brutality, and murder incarnate. No mortal man could hope to stand against one and survive. The B4, Bearborn Big Boar. Ice bear. That's what I'm if calling it. <laughs> Corn's gatekeeper will systematically <clears throat> devastate and rout our infantry, sowing discord and creating holes in our wall. We need to keep him focused on the elemental bear whilst peppering him with range. Oh, yeah. Attacks. Those gun axe dudes are probably one of my top as well. Like I just, I, I like the, the fantasy element. You know, I like it to be somewhat realistic, like have a degree of realism, but ultimately this is a fantasy game. And one thing, you know, Empire and Bretonia, they have some mild fantasy elements, right? It definitely seems like they're turning that up a bit with Kislev. With the gun axe dudes, you know, the elemental bear. You know, none of the none of the human factions have a high tier single entity monster, right? I mean, steam tanks kind of an artillery single entity, which we saw a couple more of here. Um, but to have the human faction with a little bit more of those fantasy elements, I am definitely all about. Wild. So, how does it feel to finally reveal gameplay? Uh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been brilliant. Um, Flying bloodthirsters. Yes. Fans have been eagerly anticipating the first gameplay footage and the team and I are absolutely ecstatic to be able to finally show some um, particularly considering this is such a such a new and unique um, battle type. Ah, so we get a little bit of replays. The, War game. the Realms of Chaos seem like a really bold design choice. Why have you decided to go beyond the mortal planes to include them? Mm, let's well, first see. First of all, it was always our intention to actually uh, explore the entire Warhammer fantasy universe right. um, within the trilogy. And splitting up the four gods in this way has really given us an opportunity to look at each of them in more detail because they're so incredibly rich and diverse. Yeah, see, that's what I'm content. saying. Kids Lab, due to their um, kind of proximity the chaos to chaos, you would think would have a little bit more kind of wild stuff going on. It's really given us a chance to explore new features and gameplay and, and bring some creativity <laughs> and innovation that players may not have expected to see from the third game. Opening up the Chaos Realms has quite literally given us brand new dimensions to be able to explore in terms of gameplay and features. Is there anything you're specifically hoping players take away from their experience with the game? Well, first of all, I just want um, the fans who have played uh, the game to really feel like we've ended off the trilogy in the best possible way and gone out with a big bang. And made That's going to be hard. I mean, I'll, I'll say game. this, you know, they they have a great vision Throughout for this game the, and, and what we've seen here game, certainly looks promising. Really I'm very excited personally. Wanted from the first few games, but stuff that we as developers would have wanted and try hey, to what's up, man? to get as many of those See, things as I'm going to guess. <laughs> this is the third game in a trilogy. You're welcome. So we really want people who have played the first Congratulations and good luck with your first dose and yeah, welcome. Immediately feel comfortable that it's, it's this, the same environment that they've immersed in for hundreds of hours playing the first few games, but at the same time bringing loads of innovative and interesting new features to keep them challenged and, and keep surprising people with things that they may maybe not have expected in the third and game. And I, you know, that, ultimately, that the sweet spot, is all about that, fun. Spite, uh, that that's sweet spot is where they the need to be, really I think. Like, it needs to still be Warhammer, but go, I really, to, for a game, lot of people's expectations, especially around, like, sieges and different stuff, Universe. Like we, over time, people have built these finally, expectations up, and like to say to um, yes, we'd like to thank them all for their incredible support and devotion over the last uh, few years with Warhammer One and Two. It's been incredible. Yeah, and, sorry, uh, getting distracted. As developers, uh, but it's going to be hard to satisfy everyone's expectations. I guess is my point. So good luck with that. I mean, they said they want to end it on the fans. best. Uh, possible as as well as possible you know game. best game possible but worthwhile for us thank you very much for all the kind words and uh we just hope that we've uh, been able to make warhammer 3 the kind of game you all wanted and expected and uh, and you love that as much as you loved the last two ian thank you to world okay hopefully the stream's okay uh, all right so let's get a little more solid info In here warhammer 3 will be venturing to some of the most deadly and mysterious regions of the warhammer fantasy battles universe in yes. Warhammer 1 we were in the old world In warhammer 2 we ventured to the new world within lustria and nagarond and warhammer 3 will be venturing Ooh. to kislev to the very top and west underneath the chaos realms who have been the bulwark of humanity keeping the human civilization safe from the constant chaos oh man love this concept east, art we have the mysterious 
mysterious, private, and very ancient civilization of Grand Cathay. Show us something. The mortal something. and humanoid realms no. can also travel to and play within the chaos realms themselves. Okay. Four ruinous powers seek to rule over this place, ever seeking to slip their bonds. We have Nurgle, the plague god, Slanesh, the lord of excess, Zinch. Uh, the they're not showing rose, anything new Paul, except for what we've seen, blood, you know. And rage. The inclusions of areas like the Chaos Realms has given us the opportunity to showcase the most visually distinct gameplay in Total War history. Yeah, I was just making this point earlier, yeah. To really experiment and innovate with new so, okay, so the Realms of Chaos will be on the map. Which really accentuates the horror and majesty of these demonic realms. The focus on the eastern fringes of the map has really allowed us to explore never-before-seen races in such detail in any Warhammer IP. What a nice. Okay, so we're Kislev versus Korn. That's where yeah, we're at right now, obviously. It has been to really mirror the asymmetry that you see in the tabletop game that Games Workshop have created. And that provides a lot of fun as players work out. Hey, what's up, Zach? Good to see you. Of all the races and how to use those in their favor. We've really looked to push the variety in this game, both in terms of the gameplay variation, the mechanics available for each of the races, and the content of each of those races, the roster. Yes, more variety is always great. Levels. Kislev have a quite conventional style with their army. They're built around rock-solid line infantry. And the good thing about their line infantry is a lot of it is hybrid infantry. So yes, what, well, like what we saw here, the, the gun acts very clearly well, hybrid infantry, but if you go back and watch the... These bowmen also had a spear variant. Or maybe it's a different unit, but it looked like potentially the same unit, but just a variation. To hold the line. Alongside those, we have ice witches and frost maidens using yes. the lore of ice and the lore okay, of Okay, so confirmed lord and hero for lore of ice. With a wide variety of spells, both for killing the enemy, um, debuffing the enemy, buffing their own troops. And they're supported by artillery, a wide variety of cavalry as well, including bear cavalry. Yes, Corn, yes. A fairly simple faction to play in terms of the concept behind it. They don't have magic to use. They have okay, so no magic confirmed. Units, but they do have innate magic resistance. The idea behind them is... So, like dwarfs, no magic, but magic resistance. And to get stuck into hand-to-hand -hand combat, and doing that will fuel their powerful army abilities, which will help them to achieve victory. It's blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. Okay, so Korn's gonna be simple, which is how it should be. Just go kill your enemy. Charge, was, basically. We really wanted to get the players immersed. So the, the Korn will, so will probably be the sorry, Korn. Korn will probably be the strongest the rush faction, just straight, straight up rush the faction. Door, we really wanted to show off the scale of that. Be but they the should amount, be. Because that's really their main thing, the right? You have in your arsenal to defeat them. This Ooh. also gave us the opportunity. Oh, hang on. Features such as building. Hang on, that concept this art. Also, Sorry, I'm sir. Trying to kick the door in, essentially. We really wanted to show off the scale of that. Be it with them. Ah, oh, look at this! Look at this! Oh, now, it looks so the good. Of units that you're fighting against. Okay. Okay, some more concept art for battlefields. To defeat them. This also gave us the opportunity to add in new features, such as building defensive structures, allowing your units to be summoned within battle, and you can upgrade and replenish them. We're also hoping that when players go into these battles, use all these new features, they can overcome the horde of demons that attack them, and you know, really come away with a great sense of accomplishment, knowing that you've bested one of the Chaos God's armies. Yes. The artistic philosophy has kind of been bigger, better, badder in terms of the way we've kind of developed the art. Everything yes. is kind of done at a grander scale. It's done to be much more gruesome. It's done to be much more interesting and exciting, especially with a lot of the new races coming in. We really want to make sure that we differentiate the game from the first two games whilst also making sure that it fits within the same universe. And fits yeah, it's their own thing. <laughs> The Elemental Bear was a really interesting character. We did originally look at how can we approach it? Should it be done in a more ethereal look? So should it be more ghostly, more spell? Yeah, ghostly? I mean, their infantry is a lot more hybrid, entity? so it it's less... Physically created, or is it something that... Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how their infantry kind of so power nice stacks up, but their cavalry is definitely going to be up there. And, and of course, they have monsters again. Of their range power is definitely pretty solid. From the ground, and it turns in this massive entity, basically, which is just capable of crushing... Typically, though, hybrid units pay for their hybrid status by either not having as good of a ranged attack or being pretty expensive. So, oh man. 
<laughs> uh, we need an instant replay on that. Look at this. This is this is probably my favorite thing I've seen all day. This bear is just having a just using a chaos warrior, a chaos lord, even probably as. And it turns in this massive entity, basically, which is capable of crushing vast swaths of units. And I think both us and Games Workshop were really happy with the approach, especially once we had. Look at look at him just playing. Oh, just toying with this chaos dude. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. It just it reminds me of my cat, like you know, like batting around like a piece of paper or something, you know. Oh man! You see these humanoid units running around, scurrying around their legs. You get this feeling from an old kaiju movie of these huge, monstrous units yes. taking each other on. And exactly. It really emphasizes the scale difference between the races and the factions that we go for this time around in this game. From an uh, artistic point of view, we really want players to take away how big and bold we've really <laughs> franchise with this third game. We're really going to introduce. Oh, I should ban you for that pun, but it's pretty good, so I won't. <laughs> visual identity, which will really separate this. Ah, uh, those game. towers From look the interesting. Uh, the really design of the towers is pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. ...that players are familiar with from Warhammer 1 and 2 and really polished it and refined it, whilst also introducing some nice little surprises in there that will really make it the best playing Total War Warhammer game we've ever made. Oh yeah. Oh, the Bloodthirster. Yes. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Chaos Lord Bullying should be a national sport. I agree. That's it from this Total War Warhammer 3 event. I agree. It seems that there's a lot to get very excited about. To keep up to date with all of the developments for the game or to rewatch any of the footage from tonight, make sure to keep an eye on the Total War social media channels and website. A final reminder that pre orders are all right. and will include an additional free race pack. More details on this will be coming very soon. Oh, please tell us the free race pack. I'm so curious to see who it is. From the Total War team and I, we really hope you enjoyed watching. Yeah, erectable defenses. So... Yeah, so at this point, um... Well, hold up, Nick. I will say, in about 30 minutes, I, I'll i be going live with my own kind of thoughts and uh, my own gameplay. I got a chance to play this survival battle that we just saw there, and I have some footage. I have to wait another half hour or so um, until on the top of the hour, we'll be I'll be showcasing that here. I think Turin's also going live, so... I understand if some of you want to swap over to him, but hopefully you'll keep it here. Obviously, you can go back and watch either one later, but um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of, they, they said we could live stream this, so I wanted to live stream this, and let's now, while we have a few minutes, let's go back and talk about a few things. I wanted to make a few points um, and just kind of uh, highlight some things here, right? So, um, so we have the trailer. Uh, they, you know, self-congratulations. Yes, we all love these games. That's why we're here. You know, it's been a, quite the journey. And then, yeah, so we get to the trailer part. So a few things to point out, kind of things I was talking about with, uh, with Falcon and some others, um, is in this trailer, so you notice some things, if I can find it here, um, so yeah, Warriors of Corn with dual weapons, we saw the the name for these guys pop up just briefly. Um, and then here's another look. These guys here... Um, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> but from the fire, we rise again. Yeah, so... I was trying to find something specific. Not doing a very good job. This video is quite long, so... Oh, uh, let's see here. It's a very exciting stream. So what do you guys think? I, okay, so we do have some shots of some Kislev architecture, it looks like, here. Um, so if we just kind of run through this whole thing again, and I'll be pausing more throughout. 
No one hates Total War more than the hardcore fans. I know it's true, right? But so we saw some concept art of some kids like architecture and towns, and we see that here as well. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's Aspros. What's up, man? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Standalone videos for all these are up if it helps any. Yeah, I should probably go look at those rather than trying to scroll through this long video, but let's just keep it where it is for now. So, Kids Live Architecture, we get to see a little bit of that here. Um, yeah, looks great. I mean, I, looks fantastic. Um, looks really good, actually. And then this guy, again, the the you guys in chat who are a little bit more up on the lore, you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but this guy, that Yuri dude from the letter that we saw in the last trailer, in the reveal trailer, I think that's this guy, it's supposed to be at least, from what people have said, and I don't think this is a legendary lord because he turns into a generic chaos lord as the video goes on, right? So, to me, that says generic lord, probably, for Kislev, this guy, this guy here, and then we've got another shot of those bear riders. Yuri Kovalenko. So is that like an actual character from the lore? Is that like a legendary lord potentially? I don't I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Um then we've got some more of these guys just sitting around drinking, chatting, you know, doing Kislev stuff. Uh, this guy's starting to feel the corruption a little bit, clearly. And then this, yeah, this, if you look on campaign, I'm pretty sure, okay. And one other thing to note, so, the infantry that we saw in the video, the Tsar Guard, right, uh, they had swords and shields, but they also had cloaks. But the thing is, their, uh, their equipment looks pretty similar to what these guys have on, so I don't know if this is just... Tsar Guard without the cloaks, or they're carrying spears, so maybe it's a different unit altogether. I don't know. Just kind of speculating, but it would be cool to have a, a spearman unit. <laughs> Pretty hard not to have a basic spear unit in a Total War game, unless you're dwarfs or chaos, I guess. But minor lore character, quest battle opponent at best. Okay. Okay, so Kislev General who became mutated by chaos. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're Tsarguard, though, because they don't have the cloaks. Okay, Corrupted by Chaos. Makes sense. Slotek mentioned a possible corruption mechanic for Chaos. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I think it'd be cool if your armies, like, individual armies even, could, like fall to chaos and kind of like the loyalty mechanic for uh, dark elves let's say where they just like turn against you if their loyalty gets too low let's say an army has a corruption mechanic and if the corruption gets too high then the army like turns into a full stack of spawn or something right like you guys were joking about somebody going full spawn earlier um yeah yeah see that's what i'm saying though eli like it's pretty silly for a faction not to have spears. Like, they do it for lore reasons, and even, you know, Chaos has halberds, right? Norska has spears. Even Beastmen have spears, so... You know? Like, just not to have any kind of pull weapons is a bit silly. Sorry, dwarves. Yep, now he's got his Chaos armor, and he looks quite evil. So if you ever wonder how Chaos Lords are made, this is a uh, this video should have been titled, you know, how to make Chaos Lords. <laughs> oh yeah, the the corn dual weapon bros. These guys. It looks so good. Stick orcs, stick boys. Yeah. Yeah, see, orcs, they have spears on the tabletop. They had never implemented them for Total War Warhammer, and, you know, there's still opportunity they might. There's definitely mods that do. Um, but, okay, we can see a whole bunch of units here. I'm not really going to get into it, because I have a video actually going live at 11 that breaks down all of the new units um, from the demo, and, you know, uh, what else we've seen. So, oh, oh, that was a little quick. Let's get that again. So we got these guys, and then... 
gun axe pros actually like fighting with their axes they're like charging in it's a little hard to tell that they're actually guns because it's a really quick shot but that is in fact those guys yep <clears throat> yeah my, then maybe that's why fighting in underground caves they don't like spears that actually does make sense <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that tiger thing, too. Again, we see this charging. We see the elemental bear here, Tsarina. The, see, okay, so, again, this is these guys right here look to me like the Tsar Guard, right? Like, you have the cloaks. You can see they have shields, right? They have the, the sabers that we saw in the, in the gameplay portion that they're armed with. So, it, it just, to me, it looks like those are two different distinct units. Because, you know, we know because of Warriors of Chaos that a uh, cloak is a different unit than non-cloaked, right? If you look at Chaos Warriors versus Chosen, for example. I know they have some other differences, obviously, as well, but, like, the Chaos Warriors, for some reason, don't wear helmets. Uh, <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> they live on the ground either horses. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't see the cat in the gameplay demo so far. Um, and then, yeah, so the gameplay portion, we've got blood letters here looking absolutely fantastic. Look at, look, look at them. They look so happy. They're just like got these big old grins just like, hey, guys, what's up? Good to see you. Time to die. <laughs> Yeah, the mounts, the mounts for Chaos definitely look really good. Uh, what are they called? Juggernauts or whatever? The Zargard had the ice weapons note. I think you're thinking of the, the other, like, sisters of Northerlorn. We'll get to that raw cauliflower again. I have a if you want full breakdown on like I go over the stats and everything of all the units. Uh, I have a video going live in about eighteen minutes, um, and then I'll also at the same time be live broadcasting a replay of some of my gameplay. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're gonna do Kreml Guard. We've got these Zar Guard who, you know, maybe the Kreml Guard will be like a ROR unit of Zar Guard. I don't know, but right now, all we've seen is Sargard. Show me, I know, 1.5 second sneak of Cafe. That's why when they were talking about it in that other one, I'm like, show it, show it, show it, show it. But they literally just said Cafe is going to be on the map, and that's it. Which is still something that is a piece of information. Okay, so here we see the building of barricades, right? Again, you capture the point, you get the resources, you build up the barricades. Build towers as well. You can see the towers shooting in the background there. We'll go over all of that in detail in just a minute. Yeah, the unit cards. I do have to say, the unit cards... A lot of people have criticized the unit cards for the DLCs. I think with some validity. I think some of it's potentially unwarranted. But some of the unit cards for recent DLCs have been not up to par for some of the base game ones. Um, but these unit cards, I mean, they look fantastic. Yeah, so building towers, you can see there's a few different options for you to build there. Same thing with the barricades, like in that slot you can potentially build a few different things. Um, yeah. And you see the more waves coming in. Never heard of Tsarguard? Yeah, I think the Tsarguard are something new, and a lot of this is going to be new stuff, right? Because Creative Assembly is working kind of hand-in-hand with Games Workshop. Um, they, because of that, they're going to be, uh, creating a lot of new stuff. Like, I expect to see, like, the elemental bear, right? That's something new. I don't know, maybe that's something from the lore. But, like, the ice, the, the ice archers, those are something new. Looks like a horde mode for Told War. Yeah, I mean, it is called Survival Battle, so that's a pretty good assessment. That is a very fair assessment. 
performance with the upgrades menu, where we'll buff weapons, armor, and other essential. Yeah, I I know there are some modes, Sir Sikalot. In uh, I've I've see, I've watched some gameplay. I've never played tabletop myself, but I've watched quite a bit of gameplay on YouTube. And I know there's different modes, like the Watchtower one, right, where you have to control the Watchtower. It's kind of like a victory point, right? And there's like some different scenarios you can play in the tabletop that involve some stuff like this with different uh, you know terrain pieces and such. So I'm a, I'm a fan. I think it's pretty pretty fun. Yeah, potentially, Jacob. It, again, it could be that they do a regiment of renown and call him Kreml Guard. I could see that as well. Yeah, that's a good question, and I don't I don't know the answer to that. Um, we we can talk more about that later, but that is a very very good point, Ato or Ato. <laughs> Again, Zach, we'll we'll get to that in just a minute. I'll address that point a little later. So stay tuned. I know I'm teasing a lot, but that's because I really can't go all in right now. Like 15 minutes, we'll be able to just go all in. So save your questions, and uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be talking more about that. Yeah, the Streltsy look different than their original source, exactly right. So this is what I'm saying when when it's because it's the Games Workshop artists are working with CA, right? It's not just Creative Assembly creating this themselves. Um, they're kind of working together, and I and I'm curious to know you know kind of how much back and forth there is between them of creative assembly kind of maybe suggesting things or saying maybe it'd be better to do this way you know in terms of the creative process i wonder how much they're actually involved together because it is a you know co-branded effort potentially yes yeah when everybody is streaming exactly gojira i wonder why it's almost like there's an embargo when we can all you know speak about it I just, you know, they said I could restream their stream, so I decided to start early. Get some people excited and, and uh, potentially get some fans interested here. Yeah, so the Bear Ice Artillery. Let's take a look at this guy again in detail. Did it pop up the card there? Did not pop up the card there. Okay, that's fine. This thing. This is my... The Streltsy are probably my favorite unit overall. Just because yeah, I do like regimental units. I don't know, though. The, the Cavalry, too. Ah, it's just so hard. Okay. I'll, let me go, go back. Streltsy are my favorite infantry unit that we saw. <laughs> the uh, This thing, Little Grom. This thing is my favorite uh, artillery, which is not really fair. I mean, we only saw two artillery pieces, and I really like both of them. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. Little Grom. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's amazing. It's such a fun unit. I mean, in terms of, again, it's like a, like a war wagon, but turned up to 57, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the Colleges of Magic, you know, if they would just... Uh, have people study ice magic they could potentially have those as well but you know you maybe you need demigriff knights to pull or demigriffs i don't think demigriffs would be willing to pull those somehow like i just don't think that's going to work out furies could be i mean I, in the in the trailer too right um if we kind of skip back i do believe there is some flying things in the trailer as well where is it Sorry, you guys are totally distracting me right here, but I wanted to say a shot here. I might have to actually go. Let's go to Cold War's official channel here. And yes, uh, I guess it was this. Okay, so yeah, trailer. In one of these late shots here, you can see some flying stuff, I believe. Maybe in the big Grand Army shot. Let's see. Yeah, here you can see the flying. So, yeah, Furies, I guess that's what they're called. Always are, yes. Yes, yes. 
Dual sword shirtless guys? I don't know. I don't know, maybe. I mean, I do think that what we've seen here is definitely a limited slice of both of these rosters. But uh, anyway, going back to the gameplay. Oh, the Skull Cannon. I just so happened to click directly on the Skull Cannon. This thing is another... I don't know why. I, I just, like, maybe because I'm... Uh, this Steam Tank has such a, you know, special place in my heart that I love artillery chariots for some reason. And, uh, I mean, that... That, uh... Bear thing? I don't know if it's necessarily a chariot you could consider. It is, you know, two beasts of burden pulling a cart, but the cart is on ice, and it does look relatively slow. This thing is maybe arguably more of a chariot, even though it's really like a motorcycle with two demon bros eating fireballs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, man. Skull Cannon. I love it. I love it. It's amazing. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Skaven kind of steampunk aesthetic, too. Oh, the Warriors of Corn too. They just look so good. With so many demons packed together tightly, Katarin's Frostfang ability... Katarin. They called her Katarin here. I don't know why. Oh, and the Juggernauts, too. Or, uh, sorry. These are Skull Crushers, right, Zack? You, you, Zack is a lore expert. I'm glad he's here. He knows all the names of stuff that I forget. So, I believe the, uh... The corn heavy cavalry here, that when it's the warriors riding the juggernaut, it's a skull crusher. When it's a blood letter riding the juggernaut, it's a blood crusher. Am I correct about that? Demons with flaming swords atop a motorbike. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Corn with range. Yeah, it seems they at least have that unit. I mean, we haven't seen any other range for them, but they at the very least have an artillery piece. I'm talking about these guys right here. It's kind of hard to see them over in the corner, but uh, the dudes riding, I want to say they're called juggernauts, like the big, like, mechanical corn steeds. The monstrous corn cavalry. Juggernaut is the mount, right? I'm just trying to, I, I'm uh, still trying to learn the names of all the new stuff. Yes, okay, okay. Okay, so blood, these are skull crushers then, uh, with the warriors, the knights of corn riding them. Oh, and these guys, so this is, uh... Potentially like an upper tier. I believe they're called Griffin Legion. In their flanks. <laughs> a nice snowboard. <laughs> yeah, right, Katarine? <laughs> Katarine is arguably just the most, you know, OG caster in the game now. She literally like, nope, I'm too, I'm too good to walk. Like, <laughs> Fane Chantress levitates, that's cute, you know. Like, oh, I'll go around on the ice sheet because, uh, you know, I, I'm a cool snowboarding girl. <laughs> Graphing Legion. <laughs> That's kind of a hilarious autocorrect, Nate. <laughs> the Graphing Legion are here to look at your stats. Oh, these guys, the Streltsy, and the Ice Guard, too. We got a great shot of the Ice Guards here with their glaives out. Helping support the elemental bear against this bloodthirster. What time is my gameplay? Seven minutes. Yep, we got about seven minutes. And I actually might go take a break um, in about two minutes. Um, so we'll take a like three or four minute break. Just going to walk around a bit, grab a drink of water, and get everything queued up. Oh yeah, Ice Guard. Definitely... Again, there's just like, it's hard for me to really pick favorite units for Kislev because they're all so cool, man. Like, everything we've seen so far, I'm just like, like, if you were to design a faction for me as a person, it would probably end up looking something like Kislev. Like, <laughs> if they're, you know, a lot of hybrid missile melee infantry, it's a unit class I love. Like, Great Shock Cavalry and Monstrous Cavalry. Again, two unit classes that are, like, my favorite unit classes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you've got some monster and fantasy element, which I also love. Ian, thank you so much for joining us. And I have to say, that survival battle was wild. So how did are we going to see unit cards in your gameplay? Yes, yes. It's going to be uh, just straight up the battle all from a first person... From a first person perspective, you know, unbroken, completely unedited, just raw. So... 
Yep, look forward to that. We want the sleigh! Yeah, I know, right? I I have no idea about mount options for Katarina. I'd imagine we'll hear more about that soon, but I really hope she has a sleigh mount, because then she can really give Volkmar a run for his money. Why have you decided to go beyond with her ice cream truck? Because Volkmar the Grill right now is just, uh, you know, I might be biased, but he is definitely the Lord of Chariots. I mean, don't get me wrong, Cetra's a close second in my book, but just the, it's hard to beat the, the Volkmar Grill food truck. Look at each of them in more detail because they're so incredibly rich and diverse in terms of their content. Um, and the Chaos Realms themselves are crazy places. I'm, I, you know, Samuel, I'm with you to a degree. I do think the Warriors of Corn specific units look amazing. Like, they look exactly how I wanted them to. And granted, I'm a little bit more skewed towards the Warrior side than the de Demon side. Like, Demons are cool, but like. If when it comes to demons, Zinch is the one that really speaks to me the most. Like, Corn is just kind of like generic, you know, devils and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so. Am I forgetting someone? Who am I forgetting? It get. Well, I mean, there's Ikit. Ikit's Doom Wheel is definitely probably number three. Um, I mean, Ikit is the best missile cavalry in the game, so there's that. Grom is thicker. Yeah, Grom's thicker, but he is, I mean, other than his thickness, that's really all he's got going for him. Like, his Wolf Chariot's cool, it's fast. It's got Wolves, which automatically gives it a few extra points, but, I mean, just compared to the glory of the... the Bulkmar Grill wagon. <laughs> the whole trilogy is all about fun. Um, that's been the guiding factor from the start. We really want people to just Yeah, exactly. So, all right, time to take a very short break. I'm going to switch on over to this. Let me just do this. Okay. There we are. And let me put on some music. I'll be right back in just a couple minutes, guys, and we'll get started with my own gameplay. Yeah, stay tuned. I'll be right back.
Okay, and here we are. Welcome, welcome. Are you a god? Yes, of course. How could I forget about Sirtha Ek? So, hopefully this guy is, this works. Let me know in the chat, guys, if it gets a little choppy, because I'm kind of doing this a little bit of a strange way on OBS, but, um, yeah. So here we are, official gameplay. I had the opportunity to play this survival battle, so let's start into it. I'll just start up the footage here. And let's check the audio levels. Make sure things are all good once it starts up. Yes, love the humble units. I also have a video that went live right now. It should have gone live. Let me actually check. Um, but I do have a unit that, again, highlights all the new units and abilities. I'm not going to go super in-depth right now um, with that, but... Excuse me. So here we are. Start the battle. Um... Yeah, this initial screen here, it, it just kind of reiterates some of the things we've seen. Capture points, supplies, you can build uh, structures and so forth. We have arrived in Korn's bloody realm. Before us stands the Brass Citadel, where the Blood God's gatekeeper stands guard. We must call out the fiend and slay him. Right, so again, this is, uh, it's endless waves of enemies. You have to push up and capture three capture points, and then as you hold those capture points, you get more supplies. I do think they have a finite amount, I want to say. So, like, after a while, it, um, they, enemy may recapture it. But another thing about the capture points is they actually give buffs and debuffs. You'll notice in my unit's video, um, that the... The 65, the, the armor is debuffed right now, right? And you'll see as the cards start to pop up here. Um, up at the top, you see those three icons. So, uh, I think it's maybe a little loud here. Apologies, guys. Let me... Okay, it looks like it's okay. Um, anyway, so yeah. We've got the Tsar Guard. We're going to move them up. Uh, we've got the Kossars as well. Just get everything grouped. Because, you know, got to use those groups. And you also notice on the unit cards... There's not only a, an icon for firing, but there's also an icon for braced now as well, like bracing for a charge. Get my Tsar Guard in there, Winged Lancers. Kind of miss microing, but that's fine. Voice acting is good. Yeah, voice acting's great. His audio design, as ever, is awesome. Um, yeah, looking great. Get a little bit of cinematic shot up close. I don't think I get too many cinematics in this battle, but a little bit. I definitely, in the in the video, unit highlight video I just put up, um, I, it's like almost all cinematic shots in that one, so... In fact, let me just, as this is going, double check that that actually did go live. Uh, anyway, yeah. So we're just pushing up, capturing the capture point. Um, oh, so in regards to multiplayer, this is something I did want to talk about up front. So, I asked about multiplayer, and uh, what I can tell you is... There is a multiplayer version of survival mode, but it's co-op, right? So it's you and up to three others, so four in total. Uh, you and up to three others uh, fighting together against endless waves of AI opponents. And you can take any factions, from what I've been told. Actually, we had some interviews, and I asked... That was one of the questions I asked was in regards to multiplayer, like if we got a multiplayer type of this mode. Um... Yeah, Demons Crumble, yes, so demon, Demonic Crumbling, I'll talk again a little bit about this in the video I just published, but Demons, they have a, it's a slightly different mechanic, it, uh, Demons generally have much better leadership, so it's harder to make them crumble, but their version of Crumbling called Demonic Instability does a lot more damage. Um, like, you'll notice in some shots as we go through the demons kind of falling over and bursting into flames, that's their kind of crumbling animation, it actually looks really cool in my opinion, but, yeah, co-op only, but, Eito, they did say, and, uh, there is a, a new multiplayer mode called Domination, they didn't talk about it at all today, but they mentioned it quite a bit to us in interviews and stuff, um, yeah, and Raw Cauliflower, I will say, take, uh, what you see here with a grain of salt, this is, I mean, the st stats-wise, they might be where they are going to be, but, uh, in terms of their HP, like, their HP was way nerfed in this, um... 
just for the sake of the demonstration, like they kind of made all the corn units very weak in terms of HP and model count and stuff, so they were easy to kill. Um, so the battle wasn't, I mean, it was like difficult to a degree if you didn't do certain things, but if you build the towers, uh, it's no problem. Like I, I played the battle six times and I only lost once when I specifically went with a no tower run. Like I explicitly chose not to build any towers. And that was the only time I lost. So anyway, you can see I'm summoning in some new units here. Uh, we've got the Sreltsi, we've got Cossars with Spears, we've got the Horse Archers. Um, and you can see here the costs as well. I, this is probably what they're thinking for the gold cost, which, uh, you know, obviously the balance is not final, so don't really think too much about balance at all. Uh, this is very much still in development. But it kind of gives you an indication of what they're thinking for each unit's kind of power level, where they want it to fit in, in terms of cost here and everything. 850 for the Streltsy seems about right. It's pretty expensive, but this is a really good unit that's just uh, going to be great in a multitude of situations. So... Yeah, and one other thing about the Kreml Guard, too, is... Or, sorry, the, the Tsar Guard is there is a Great Weapon variant as well, most likely, from what we've seen in the, uh, in the trailer. In the, in the first release trailer, there was some that had, like, Great Hammers, basically. Um, and in some of the promotional materials I have, too, some of the screenshots and stuff, um, they also show them with, uh, Great Weapons, so... Yeah. So just kind of holding off, this first demon wave is going to approach from the side here. We'll get some demons, some some corn warriors, some doggos as well. But uh, let me just quickly edit something here. <laughs> I have a new thumbnail to put up. Oh, the file's too big. Okay, whoops, my bad. Yeah, the new stat card, it does look nice. So it's not too different, but you'll notice that uh, you'll notice the buffs and debuffs are hanging out up on the top right corner of the card. Like you'll see these little circles pop up. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse right now, but up here on the top right corner of the card, when it when there's debuffs and buffs, they'll pop up up there. I was not, I didn't ask how many players, I figure domination mode is probably typical multiplayer, but basically, anyway, getting back to that, essentially it's going to be multiplayer mode with capture points, and, uh, yeah, they didn't give me too much information about it, but basically it's like multiplayer with capture points, and the capture points, I think you'll be able to summon reinforcements, I don't think you'll be able to buy upgrades and build towers like you can in this mode, but I do think you'll be able to potentially, uh, get reinforcements, so... The, the intention from what they told me is that you can kind of retool your army mid-battle, right? So... I mean, the contrast is definitely good. Yeah, they're going to be burnt by range, but the demons have physical resistance and corn demons have magic resistance, right? So that effectively means that all corn demons have damage resistance. Again, balance numbers aren't final, but corn demons specifically have just straight up damage resistance because physical plus magic equals damage, right? <laughs> Yeah, the, the corn demons are very fast. One thing you'll also notice is uh, they have great charge, and like the warriors of corn, um, they the, they're similar to chaos warriors. They have a more offensive stat line, and they also pick up frenzy. Again, I talk about all this in a very concise way in my brand new video. But and also keep in mind again that the corn units, the balance is not <laughs> something that's it's even a consideration here. Like this was specifically put on easy mode because it wasn't just us playing this, right? It's major press outlets from all over the world, and uh, you guys know the game reviewer meme, right? Like how some game reviewers, and granted, I don't, you know, nothing wrong with them as people. They're obviously. They've got to be great writers, hopefully, ideally, to get the job that they have, right? But sometimes they're not the best at playing video games. And if Joe Schmo has never played a Total War game and gets assigned by Dare Magazine uh, to cover Total War Warhammer and gets invited to this press event, it, you know, he needs to be able to play it, right? So 
they kind of put it somewhat on easy mode, I think, because of that. And also just to give us an opportunity to kind of look at everything and not be completely overwhelmed. But I'd imagine this is going to be substantially more difficult um, in the release version. Because all of these units, if all of these units were full strength units, this would be an extremely challenging battle. Like, you definitely have to be utilizing all of these tools, especially replenishment and such. Yeah. <laughs> Game journalist mode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, the you can see the replenishment there is really nice. So I also bought the armor upgrade for my cavalry just because uh, the winged lancers they hit really hard. Uh, probably, it's probably are going to cost the same as Empire Knights. They hit much harder, but they are squishier. You know, lower armor. They're faster though, quite a bit faster. They probably some of the fastest heavy cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, Wei? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, the towers are very important. Uh, there's a few different varieties of towers you can build, and right now, some of them do give a speed debuff. I don't know, again, this is not all final, so... But, potentially, the different types of towers you can build... Um, yeah, you can see because of the low health pool, those doggo units are just getting eaten up by the towers, and I really don't have to do a ton. So it, with the towers, like, you kind of just build them and, like, leave the horse archers back. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, corn especially, because it has very limited range. I mean, we did see the skull cannon, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute, but... Oh, so the magic thing on the right. So the way the magic Winds of Magic is displayed is different. Um, don't think too much about the numbers, because that's something they said is not finalized in terms of... In this battle, we actually had unlimited magic reserve, right? So, okay, so I should probably go back and explain. So this hourglass, uh, the top of the hourglass is your Winds of Magic reserve, and your bottom is the pool, right? So, and you see how the arrow flows down, a little green arrow, say it's flowing down. Basically what this means is you have Winds of Magic Reserve and you're regenerating Winds of Magic. And in this battle specifically, we could hold up to 120 Winds of Magic. And again, there was unlimited power reserve. So the numbers I don't think will be like that in standard battles. Maybe in some of these special modes like the survival battles. And they did say they have other new game modes to show as well, including minor settlement battles. I think that's something I can talk about because they told me. Um... Yeah. <laughs> unlimited magic. Yeah, for this one specifically, for this demo, we had unlimited magic. But um, you know, we could hold up to 120 wins of magic. So personally, I do think it would be cool for them to just upgrade the total wins of magic that you could hold to like maybe 60. Um, even for like regular multiplayer battles, I think that would be pretty cool. That's one popular feature of some certain mods is increasing the wins of magic that you can hold. Um, like in your in your pool, so but even if it still stays the same. I love the representation of this I think it's a much improved kind of visualization of The winds of magic you can see both your reserve and your your current, you know magic in a very concise way Oh, yeah, get a little more close up these streltsy fighting off some corn warriors Yeah, minor settlement battles, exactly. It's true, they did say. And, I mean, if they told me, they, there wasn't anything saying I couldn't talk about that, so... Yeah. Uh, let's see here. We must press on into the blood pits and seize the icon of blood! Uh, sorry, just checking something real quick here. Okay, yeah, just checking. Yeah, that, I mean, there wasn't anything saying I couldn't talk about it, and they, they told us about it, so... Um, I don't, I can't really speak about Sieges too much. One thing I did, the talk, they t talked about in the interview, and they didn't commit to anything, so, you know, this isn't, uh... This, you shouldn't take this as confirmation, but they, we asked... Somebody asked about the building mechanics in my interview session, and they said they're looking at 
putting those building mechanics into different game modes. So potentially we could see like these uh, these building mechanics of building like barricades and towers in specific places and maybe like upgrades and replenishments and stuff. We could see some of those mechanics also make their way into sieges. It's a possibility. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't have any more information about sieges than it's possible. I know that's definitely something that they've thought about. Uh, everyone has talked about. Um, but I, I don't have any information on that, really, other than it's possible some of these building mechanics would be in there. Maybe. <laughs> Is that a blood fountain? Of course, it's the realm of corn. Blood for the blood god. Unit outlines. Yeah, you see that's new as well. The selected units actually, not only does it hi highlight on the ground, but it actually highlights like around the character models, which is another great improvement. <laughs> right? <laughs> Vampire counts just like jumping in the fountain. <laughs> that's interesting. You know, Vampire counts kind of relationship to corn. as I kind of set up my lines here. Katarine going to do a little bit of kiting action. I'm thinking about casting these different spells. Decide not to. Just going to absolutely nuke those halberds. That's actually extreme overkill, but... Oh, yeah. The Kossars look great, though. They're pretty decent. They're kind of like Free Company Militia, but with bows. Yeah. Yeah, the UI outline looks more crisp. Yeah, and it's green instead of yellow, which is really nice. Uh, especially on certain maps. And I'm wondering if that is map-specific, because, for example, on some of the Lustria maps, that green might be hard to see, right? It looks like the range markers might be different color, but really, I think, because of the fantasy nature of Total War Warhammer, they almost need to have, like, a uh, dynamic selection marker color, like, depending on the map kind of color. Don't think vamps have too much involvement with Chaos. Yeah. It's interesting to think about, though, like, if we have the awesome, if we have the possibility to do these survival battles in campaign with any faction, um, then you could potentially, like, if these are in the quote-unquote Immortal Empires campaign, right, you could potentially, like, invade Korn's realm with Vlad for the blood, you know? <laughs> yeah, you would think that they would want to come in here and just take, steal the blood, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see a lot of possibilities with what they're showcasing here. I am excited to see more of the new different battle modes, but personally, I had a great time with this. You can see me just kind of managing the back line here. I really don't even need those shock cavalry back there. More than anything, they're probably just getting friendly fired by the towers, but it's fine. It's fine. We're moving up for the second, ca bleh, second capture point. There's some vampires who've made excellent champions for Korn. It's true, and I guess Krell's a champion of Korn, and he now serves Kemler, so there is some connection there. Every blood dragon ever. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Gonna hold that with the cavalry for the time being. We'll get some more cavalry shortly. Gonna fast forward a little bit as I kind of move up. It does take a long time to run around the fountain. Kane's all about the the act rather than the result, right? The corn's interested in the material results, you know, the blood, the skulls, th those kinds of things. Whereas Kane just wants the action to be done. He doesn't really care about the results. For him, it's all about the journey, right? Let's see the horse archers up close a little bit. Oh, yeah. You might see some of these cinematic shots in some of my videos as well. <laughs> uh, okay, so a little bit of a pause just to kind of realign here. We are going to be getting some more units in here as well. I think maybe I was making a note real quick right here. But, uh, yeah, we're going to get a couple more of the Tsar Guard. And let's see, what else do I decide? Probably the Patriarch as well. That's that hero dude right there. He's uh, kind of like an Empire Warrior Priest, but on a bear. Ungles for the win. Hey, what's up, Falcon? Welcome. 
Yeah, so just taking my sweet time deciding what to do here. Trying to allocate resources. And they do spawn back here. It was kind of inconsistent and buggy, like where my reinforcements were spawning. They spawned at different points in different, uh, you know, different playthroughs. So I'm sure that's something that they'll work on to try and get addressed, but... Yeah, just get some guys moving up here, get set again. Yeah, I have more reinforcements coming shortly. You do have to wait for the supplies to tick up. You can see that they're kind of ticking up over time. And the waves, the different waves, kind of how you defeat them and everything, it is endless. So once you get to the final zone, like, uh, until you kill the boss, there will be, like, endless waves of stuff. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's more like an ethnic group, exactly. So, like, the Kossars, the Horse Archers, there, it's, the the name is the unit's, like, job, rather than the people. Yeah, we sh we'll see. There might be, like, some Ungol wagons, I hope. I mean, war wagons are one of my favorite things in Warhammer, so... Uh... Yes. Yes. So the from what I found, building the barricades didn't to be didn't seem to be the best use of the resources. Like definitely building towers and getting units was the best. And then if you had some left over, you could buy some upgrades. But also replenishing units was super important as well. Um, and if your unit completely died, um, you could resummon them through the reinforcements pool. Uh, as long as you have the supplies, and as long as you have a place to summon them, like as long as you control at least one of the three control points. So, are the units mixed? It does appear that the horse archers are mixed. I don't know about the the Cossack, uh, the Cossar, rather, infantry, um, but I did see the horse archers are mixed. It does appear, yes. Yes, that's correct. I don't know if you'll get any good uh, audio on this, but you can hear when they when they do their charges and stuff that there's both men and women screaming. <laughs> yep, getting the cav charging in there a little bit. They are relatively squishy. They do take damage pretty quickly, but pop that little charge bonus buff. It doesn't last a super long time. It's only nine seconds. So you gotta use it when you're pretty close. Definitely pretty micro-intensive, but again, balance is not final. Blood Crusher's coming and just ruining my day over there. <laughs> oh, and something else to notice as well. You see that circle that pops up when I highlight a spell? So that's a range finder, basically. So it shows you a circle of you can cast that spell anywhere inside the circle. So I think it's a little bit too bright that UI element, I think they need to tone it down a little bit, but I really like the idea of rather than like having to click the spell and then like highlight somewhere to see if you're in range, you just hover over the spell and you can immediately see like, okay, I am not in range or I am in range. Like very quick. I like that a lot. Another nice little UI improvement. Bossars, they appear to be Ungols? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the lore of Kislev, so I probably shouldn't talk too much about it, but... We're doing fine, just uh, pausing to make sure, but trying to take in the whole experience here. The cav are kind of getting wrecked though, that is a big old angry mob of corn, corn demons right there. Corn demons and warriors and all sorts of stuff. Um, I think they'll probably be fine. Um, I mean, cav is in a little bit of a weird place right now, but I'm sure they'll, they'll address balancing. Um, that's something that they said they're going to be focusing a lot on over the next few months, so... I'm, I'm not really going to comment too much about it right now, but... Yeah. I know that the cavalry issue has been an issue for Total War Warhammer kind of throughout, throughout its lifespan in terms of playing Legendary Campaign. In multiplayer, cavalry is still pretty decent in the right situation right now, but it is a little bit trickier to use because of some of the mass changes, but I don't know. Yeah, Knights of the Blazing Sun are still very good. Certain ones are. It's just, you have to be more careful with them than you ever did before. But anyway, you can see I'm uh, building some, some more towers there. They have the Piercing Tower, which is just like, uh... 
not a full on. It, I think it does have an explosion element. The magical tower is even more powerful. These basic ones down here are just the regular arrow towers. Um, they're actually, no, the tier 2 arrow towers, they actually give a speed debuff. All of the upper tier towers actually give speed debuffs, which is another thing that kind of made it a little bit easy, because the hounds get hit by that, they get a speed debuff, and I think it get, counts as getting attacked by artillery as well, I want to say. Um, and then, you know, you have the other leadership effect of the... Horse archers shooting them, and, and the damage is, is such that they just almost instantly rout. And even if they didn't, they couldn't catch the horse archers because they're getting hit by a speed debuff from the towers. So, yeah, the towers I do think, again, it's kind of hard to say because the corn units are kind of weak, but the towers do seem quite strong. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Bretonian Cav is pretty good right now, but... Something else big that I haven't talked about yet here, I did talk about in my video that I just published, but uh, there's also a new uh, thing for single entities called Wounds. Uh, basically, all single entities, if you'll notice here, if I pause on... Uh, if I go back a little bit, just pause on Katarine's unit card. So, I wish I could zoom in. Maybe I can. Here, let me let me see if I can do a haggard zoom in. Oh yeah, there we go. That is ultra haggard. So you see, there's tons of abilities down here on Katarine's card, but uh, I want you to specifically pay attention to this one right here. Um, that has little drops of blood. So this is wounds, the wounds trait, right? And all single entities have this. Basically, once their health below, goes below 50% HP, they lose a little bit of weapon strength and speed. Basically, trying to replicate, uh, you know, the fact that multi-model units actually lose killing power as they lose models. Single entities do not. Uh, this is sort of a mechanic to help try and uh, bring that more in balance, um, which should help nerf, uh, like, especially small, cheap single entities. Um which I think is definitely a good thing. We'll see how they balance it out, because right now, again, balancing is definitely a consideration. Right now, large, sing large expensive single entities are typically not worth it in multiplayer. They're actually in a pretty bad place right now. Uh, this will nerf characters too, though. I mean, it's all, all single entities. All characters, all single entity monsters. Even, I'm guessing, something like a corpse cart will probably have wounds also. So... Yeah. Anyway. Why is this higher FPS than the official reveal? <laughs> oh, whoops, let me transition back over. Here we go, now you can actually see what's happening. Yeah, you can see the towers there, those piercing towers. It's a pretty good, pretty good little missile attack. Definitely helps equalize things, but uh, the Ice Guards, I'm going to need their help. My cavalry's kind of getting beat up right there by a giant glob of corn. All of that stuff is like high attack, high damage too. Like even the corn bros with dual hand weapons, um, they have pretty good weapon damage overall, even if they're not quote unquote armor piercing, right? So... Yeah, yeah, in 40k and in AOS more recent editions, yeah, exactly. Multi-model units lose power at, or sorry, single model units, like heroes and, and even like vehicles and stuff, right? In 40k. Anyway. Yeah, Kislev, I, I think they've done a good job of differentiating them. Like, it definitely seems like they're going to be very different from the Empire. Like, some similarities, definitely, but they will be very different. Much more of a monstrous presence. Um, like, more hybrid troops as well. Like, probably some of their troops will be very cost-effective, but I don't know if they'll really be, like, the most cost-effective for low-tier troops like Empire has, but they'll be more generalized, right? So you'll have a lot of ranged melee hybrid. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh... 
in terms of battle, you can see me just kind of engaging with that big old glob of stuff over there. Getting another little close-up shot. The Griffin Legion cavalry just mashing. The the fact that I have this... Uh, another thing, too, with the you'll notice with the Patriarch is he actually has an AoE heal. So I'm using that to kind of sustain my cavalry. Looks like one unit is going to die anyway, but they will retain all their experience and upgrades they've got. Um when you resummon them to the battle. The upgrades do not carry out to the campaign map, but earned XP does, definitely. And while the units are kind of waiting in the... You can actually retreat units, you know, or if they themselves get either annihilated or, or chased off the battlefield, then they're in your reinforcements pool, and during that time they're also replenishing as well. So you can actually, you know, bring your units back full strength if you have the uh, the supplies to do so. Just getting a little cleanup. We are having some issues with some of the stuff in the back line, but no big deal. Moving up to the final capture point now, and we see our first Bloodthirster. You can see, yes, the Bloodthirsters are flying. So, put a little, a little bit of slow motion there. He's about to charge my giant blob of uh, Kossars, but... They should, I mean, there's literally like, you know, 500 more of them. <laughs> Can't do math right now, but uh, maybe not quite 500. But still, there's a lot of them. So regardless of the Bloodthirster, he does land there, starts attacking a little bit. Something sundering his armor. I'm not 100% sure what. Maybe it's one of those towers. But uh, yeah, <laughs> just trying to get all my troops to focus on him right now. Getting the Targard and the uh, Streltsy moved up. A little bit late, a little bit sloppy, but that's okay. And see, some of my Targard are approaching their healing cap, mostly just from using the supply replenishment. Flying humanoid entities. Yes, confirmed, Zach Waits. So that gives me hope that they'll hopefully implement flying for some older characters like Malagor, maybe, who honestly should be like that. <laughs> Turn into poop sludge. <laughs> Slanesh demons, yeah. Yeah, and corn demons will just like, I don't know, turn into beams of light or something. <laughs> Purple blue mist. Anyway. Yeah, definitely feel the, the kind of weakened power of these units, but we're getting close to the end here. Um, the towers make it quite a bit easier, I have to say. <laughs> makes it so that I can kind of be a little bit sloppy with my micro and not, uh, you know, not really put too much into it. But honestly, in terms of the overall design of the game mode, I really like this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun in campaigns to have these kind of big, you know, epic set piece battles that involve you just literally butchering thousands and thousands of unit models as you try and invade. And basically the idea is like that you can never hope to beat all of the whatever demons, you know, Corn or or Nurgle or whoever, um, you can't defeat all of their demons in their realm, right? Like, that's literally impossible. The thing, the only thing you can really realistically do is hope to go in there, hold the, hold the line for a certain amount of time and accomplish some specific objective, right? Which in this case would be to take out this specific demon, right? So, yeah, Kislev in this demo looks so OP, but it's not. <laughs> Where's the Bloodthirster? It, it got melted pretty quick, to be honest. Flying Kemmler would be epic. It'd be interesting. <laughs> it would be very mean. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, because little Grom spawned way back there, uh, he's going to have a hard time getting up to the final fight. We we'll, might just have him hold the back line. He does have anti-infantry, though, so the, uh, the bears, I guess, on the front count as anti-infantry AP, so they can kind of punch the hounds a little bit. Yes. Well, you can see Zack Wait in the animations here that the corn demons just burst into regular, like, red flames. Even though it'd be cool if they turned into pools of blood. Maybe with the blood DLC they will. But. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see the Furies. There's your Furies. They're flying in, getting hit by the towers. Get my cavalry up there. And once we capture this final capture point, then we can get the really good stuff. The uh, bears. Bears, of course.
I'm thinking about building a barricade there. Uh, some of the barricades are not actually, like, there's a monument, basically, that will give you more buffs. And I'm guessing it'll probably be different for different survival battles, like you'll have different options of stuff to build. At least I hope so. <laughs> Harkrolius? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, maybe. We'll see. It's hard to say this early on. But again, just trying to keep my bearings here and not get too discombobulated. I did lose one of my horse archers, but you can also refill ammo, so I'm not really too worried about overspending ammo on some of my units here. I also got an ice bear. It did actually summon up front. You can see also has a breath attack. <laughs> furies, yes. Oh, we oh, just the, the fury, the chant of the furies. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, this is gonna be interesting. My Tsarguard are pretty beat up, and those Skull Crushers do massive armor piercing damage on the charge, so probably just gonna get eviscerated there. But we'll see. Got some more warriors coming up with dual hand weapons with halberds. Got some more blood letters coming in as well. Yeah, any other questions you guys have, feel free to fire away in the chat. We're getting close to the end of this particular playthrough, but again, you see how it's going up all the way up to 91 wins of magic? Um, let me just look at my notes, too, again, and make sure I didn't miss anything. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot, I'm actually just doing the display here, so I'll have to wait on that. They love their ice up in Kislev, yes they do. Yeah, I'm curious to see what they do with the Blood DLC this time. I don't expect a lot of really fundamental changes, but maybe, hopefully they'll retool the textures a little bit to make them look a little better. Maybe retool the coloring a little bit so it's not quite so <laughs> cartoony. Uh, no, I, I don't, I not that I've seen. Um, yeah, it appears from what I've seen that flying units work the same way they do right now. Like, I don't think there's a toggle um, from what I've seen. At least the AI didn't use it against me, and again, it's hard to say because I didn't actually get to utilize the flying units myself, but I don't think so. Mass any different in this game? It seems like it's probably about the same as what Warhammer 2 is right now. I don't know, you can see there, I mean, granted, it's kind of hard to judge because the Corn Cavalry are very heavy, right? They're monstrous cavalry, kind of like Demigriff Knights. Like, the Bear Cavalry are very heavy as well, and like right there, they just walked straight through a line of, albeit, very tattered Zargard, so it's hard to say. I didn't really get a good read on it, to be honest, but it seems like it's probably about the same as uh, Warhammer 2. Elemental Bear? Yeah, it's not the most creative name. Horse Archers also, for a unit of Horse Archers, is not the most creative name, but hey, it's here. Oh yeah, there's the Bloodthirster death animation. You see how it kind of bursts into flames there? Super, super cool. Exalted blood letters, yes. Yep, you see the blood letters with the glowing swords. Exactly, exalted blood letters. Performance rework. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. I, in terms of the... Oh, another mechanic I forgot to mention uh, that we'll see as the Bloodthirsters deal fire damage didn't come into a big factor in this game because I didn't have a ton of healing, but fire damage actually reduces uh, HPS received, like heals per second received for, I think they said 10 seconds. So basically, again, fire has a contact effect now. It gives a debuff which lowers the amount of healing received is the way it should be looked. Again, numbers are not final, but... They are implementing a mechanic where uh, fire damage uh, lessens healing, which is how it works. In, in tabletop, it actually interrupts like any healing ability, I think, right? It just straight up stops it, and then you have to recast it, at least with certain things. Um, but in this, it will just lower healing from any source received by... Uh, right now, it's by 50%, which is pretty substantial. I don't know if, again, that's not... may not be the final number, but I really, really like that. More kind of new counterplay mechanics to address some of the issues like healing and single entities. Um, I really, really like those 
those uh, changes, and it remains to be seen as well whether, like, the standard regeneration trait still gives weakness to fire, or if they're going to remove that because of the fire implementation, countering healing. Like, I wonder how they're gonna go about addressing that, and, like, Kindle Flame too. I don't know if Kindle Flame will still stay how it is right now, or it just gives a straight-up damage increase. Um, but... Yeah, just uh, finishing off the last wave here. You can see the Zargard took an absolute beating in pretty much every single battle I played. Like, the Zargard just got crumped. They they just got beat down. Most of them ended up getting to their healing cap and still dying anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can see I actually lost the, the first zone there. All the There's some spawn as well. You see that monstrous infantry back there is actually a corn spawn. Um... But, uh, yeah, they actually took that, that first area, so now I'm just defending the uh, second two. Got some Furies getting in there. Skull Cannon is uh, out on the, the flanks there, so I want to go interrupt them with my cavalry if possible, but uh, instead my cavalry, it looks like, might be on skirmish mode or something. I don't know. The Ungles. <laughs> Knights coming down, the Griffin Legion, and uh, Lancer's going to crump those wolves. Doggos. Like, we needed more reasons to take Knights of the Blazing Sun, I know, right? Like, uh, against any faction that has any form of healing, uh, Banner of Eternal Flame is going to be a must-have, right, for Empire. And it'll mean units like, like for example, Clans, Vulcans, Tail Slashers all of a sudden becomes like a, a nice kind of tech pick if you're in a matchup where you might face something that has regeneration. Like, even though they're not actually that great of a unit, they still give you that fire effect, and they can do some things. Um, yeah. Zoom in on spawn. If you want a, a close-up of the spawn, Cauliflower, you'll have to go... Uh, I, I put up a video highlighting all the units. It should have gone line just now. If you go check that out, there's a lot of great cinematic shots in that video. I, yeah, I think, Ty Guy, this is pure speculation. Again, no insider information on this, but my guess is we'll see actually Nurgle versus Slanesh because, you know, the Chaos Gods are very well known for fighting each other. Um, and, and Slanesh and Nurgle, I think, are like rivals, right? And then kind of Zinch and Korn are rivals, if I remember right. Um, and so since we've seen... Kislev versus Korn. My guess is, again, pure speculation, we'll see Slanesh versus Nurgle, and then uh, Zinch versus Cathay, since Cathay is probably going to have a lot of, like, heavy magical fantasy elements, probably more so than other human factions, if I had to guess, based on some of what they've said already. Huge nerf to Tomb Kings. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, kinda. If you can manage to have fire damage while they're getting their uh, Realm of Souls, I guess, yeah, it is pretty significant if you have fire damage kind of across your army. It's a big nerf to vampire counts, too. It means fire damage is essential against vampire counts always, right? Hey, thanks, Rock Hallflower. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. It was an absolute pleasure. Huge thanks to CA for including me. It was a ton of fun, and it got me super, super hyped. Uh, Kislev is officially my new main. Like, <laughs> the Empire might take a backseat to Kislev even after they come into the game. Maybe I'll go back to maining Empire and kind of have Kislev and Bretonia be my second and third, but man, Kislev speaks to me in so many ways. Zinch versus Nurgle. Okay, Corn versus Slanesh. Because for me, I was thinking in my mind, like, Slanesh is like, ew, gross, like, sickness. That's not fun at all. Like, that's not pleasurable at all. Whereas, you know, I would think that Zinch would be like, ah, Corn's such a stupid simpleton. <laughs> like, we need all these grand designs, and Corn's just like, charge, you know? So that's, that's kind of what I was thinking with that. But maybe, maybe that's just my own perception. Yeah, Felcon, there is a missing an some missing animations on the Bloodthirster. You'll see him teleport to the ground a couple times. It's just because he's not totally 100% finished yet. But one thing to notice, too. Okay, so this is actually the big boss. I don't know. Did I show his stat line here? 
Um, anyway, so yeah, in this final battle, I'm not really doing a great job commentating. But So we now have the big boss coming in, and there's also a hero. You can see a demon hero. It's a Herald of Corn riding a juggernaut. And then there's the big boss. So once his card pops up, if I can, I'll snag it real quick. Yeah, so you can see this big boss here is definitely like a quest battle <laughs> character. He's got 20,000 HP. Um, you know, 70 melee attack, flaming magic damage, massive weapon strength, 90 armor. He is flying, got some abilities. Do notice that he has the wounds trait as well though, right? And uh, yeah, just insane. I don't expect them to be that powerful in regular battle, but he was definitely a meat bag in comparison to all of the other units that Korn had. Yeah, Cafe has a really, really strong connection to Zinch, exactly. So that's why I would think they'd show them kind of side by side. But uh, you never know. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. So Heralds are in. Yes, Heralds are in. That's correct. We'll see. I I'm curious to know how the, the balance of Corn is going to be. Like, they're... Again, the, don't take the balance from this away too much. Because the Corn units are supposed to be quite weak. Except for this guy. Who's definitely not, but... Get some nice close-ups of the bears kind of double-teaming him. <laughs> nice whip attack there. It looks like a matched animation almost. That was pretty cool. I think the bears do have some matched animations against the bloodthirsters potentially. And again, you notice how the unit models are different, right? So the, the, the bloodthirster unit here, you can see he has a great axe. He has a two-handed axe. Whereas the big boss had a whip and an axe, right? So I do think that this guy, this the the Lord right here, is maybe the unit model for the Lord level Berserker. Or sorry, the Lord level Bloodthirster. And this is just the unit Bloodthirster. Like you can see, even see the icon and everything. I just wanted to point out, those are two different unit models. Faster than a dragon. Yep, yeah, they are faster than dragons. They're almost like flying Shagos in a way that are, you know, a little bit less tanky than Shagos, but you know, very hard hitting and uh, very, very uh, fast as well. Less less armored though. <laughs> you can see those, those poor Kossars with spears just getting absolutely annihilated. And uh, my bear is also heavily tied down in uh, blood letters right now with the Bloodthirster and with that Herald as well. <laughs> so definitely gets pretty intense by the end. And this is what I mean. If all of these units were full strength, this would be a very challenging battle, actually. And I mean, granted, we didn't even have a full army to start with. But from what I gathered in campaign, because these, these battles will be in campaign, right? You'll have one for each of the four Chaos Gods. And in campaign, you'll be able to bring your own army, obviously, but then you can still buy reinforcements. They said it will depend on which legendary lord you're playing as. Uh, that will determine what reinforcements you get. Um, but, yeah, so there will be one of survival battle each for each of the Chaos Gods. And because you can bring your own, they said it will start in the mid-game and run into the late-game. So mid-to-late-game armies plus reinforcements, I would imagine that you know, in the actual full release version that all of these corn units will be full strength and this will be actually, you know, quite challenging, potentially. <laughs> corn Furies, yes, yes. So they have Furies of Corn, so I'm guessing they're going to have Furies for each of the other Chaos Gods as well, sort of with different abilities. Like, again, the corn stuff has, like, magic resistance, sometimes has Frenzy. There's another ability called Hellblade where... If a unit gets over 80 kills, uh, it gets a weapon strength buff. So, and it is cool to see the mixed warriors and demons together as well. That is what I wanted to see, was god-specific factions with mixed warriors and demons. That's literally exactly what we got here. All the blood letters just getting stepped on, <laughs> literally. <laughs> uh... Yes, exactly, implying other god furies. And also spawn of corn, implying there might be spawn of other uh, gods. There's, you know, the warriors of corn, so there's warriors of other gods as well. So it does seem like they are trying to create a lot of unique, kind of differentiated units. Like, they're, yes, it's the same unit, but depending on which god you're playing, it will have different traits, right? Which I think is appropriate.
uh, this 110 above hero units? You know, I don't actually know. I didn't actually ask about that. I... 10... I think... Is that the number of abilities they have off of cooldown or something? I don't actually know. I, you know, I hadn't actually noticed that even as I was playing until you pointed it out just now. But, uh, maybe that's the, f the ranking? The hero ranking or something? Because I see, yeah, my guy's, like, rank 1. And Katarina's 1. I don't know, actually. I don't know what that means. Is it threat, perhaps? Priority? I don't really know. I didn't ask. <laughs> I didn't even notice that when I was playing. That's a good eye. I don't know. My but, uh, anyway. I wonder if that's... Yeah, no, it's not active effects, but do notice here that uh, the elemental bear has been hit by a flaming attack. It says on fire right here. You can see down in the UI, there's hidden, there's taking fire, there's on fire, and there's braced. So there's quite a few little, uh, like, status icons that can pop up here, and they can display multiple at the same time. Again, on fire, you can see it up here as well. Uh, just means that he's taking reduced healing right now, right? So... <laughs> ah, that's gonna be a, the joke of the Furies, right? There it is. That's the survival battle. That was my, uh, I think that was m maybe my third or fourth playthrough. Again, I played it six times. Now I'm just going to quickly go over the unit valuations, and also keep in mind here that these valuations are kind of all over the place because, like, the corn units are very weak, and I don't know if their cost was adjusted at all, so, like, <laughs> uh, you can see here, Katarine got 1,407 kills, 65,896 damage. <laughs> Her magic spells, again, the balancing is definitely not final. I didn't really talk a lot about the magic I was using, but that big area of effect damage spell that she has, it's kind of like a Dwellers Below, but it gets successively, you know, more intense over time, um, is ridiculous right now. I expect that to probably be not that strong when the release comes out, but who was very, very strong in this battle. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, I don't know exactly what the, I mean, other than coming into the Chaos Realm to kill this champion, I don't know exactly what that's accomplishing, right? But ostensibly, we're like trying to maybe recover some artifact or do some kind of a ritual or something. Um, I don't know exactly what the motivation is for invading the Chaos Realms, but we do see that. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, exactly, because units have like 20% HP, it looks cool, but it's not actually totally accurate assessment of their value, but it's just ridiculous. I was literally like laughing, just looking at that, like, oh my. <laughs> Katarine the Ultra Chad. The ever, the true ever Chad. Streltsy got really good value as well. One of them, 251 kills. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. Elemental Bears kind of took took a beating in a lot of my battles. They ended up being more tanks. They get some pretty good damage out, though. Kind of got them a little late into the battle for them to get a ton of value. The Bear Riders, though, probably the most powerful unit as it as it st excuse me as it stands right now is is the War Bear Riders. From my experience, um, that's the one I had the best success with. Like they consistently carried me in the late game against that big boss. But yeah. Still war and still killing. So that's basically it, guys. Um, that is it for my live gameplay. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any more questions, I'm going to be heading out relatively soon. But for today, it's been a great, great day of some awesome reveals. So put your questions in the chat if you have them. Uh, let me pull up my notes here. Just swap on over to this. very briefly and let me just pull up my notes here okay
Yes. Yeah, every archer unit got way more than the expensive melee ones. It's true, and I mean, granted, you're fighting a, a corn army, which their main weakness is they don't have a lot of range to no magic, right? Um, and they're very melee focused, so I would expect my melee units, it's kind of, I would kind of expect that my melee units would get mauled and my ranged units would have to do lifting as a more balanced faction. Like, that is something that I would expect to be the case, but... Yeah, again, it's hard to judge because the corn units are kind of weak. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining. You guys have been awesome. Could you read the corn abilities? So, for those of you guys asking about that, let me just quickly point you to this video here. So, I go over all of the new units and all of the new abilities from what I saw. I show, like, the stack cards, compare them to existing units with this video right here. So if you guys want to see more details about abilities, um, you know, unit stats and everything, and see everything um, kind of in a more concise format, check out that video right there. If you guys have any more kind of Q&A questions about what I saw here, um, let me just quickly double check. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, I talked about that. I talked about minor settlements. They did say new siege mechanics. Again, we'll see what exactly what that entails. I don't have any more information about it. Domination battles for multiplayer. Some of you guys, guys might have missed this, so... There is a new multiplayer mode. They didn't give me a lot of information about it, but they just said it's called Domination Battles. Uh, with It has capture points like what we saw in that battle there. Um, there will be capture points and you would potentially get reinforcements by holding the capture points or gain victory that way somehow. I don't exactly know. Again, they didn't give us a lot of information, but it's something. And also, uh, this survival mode can be played in co-op with up to three other people. You can take any army you want and try and survive the hordes of chaos together. So that's looking like that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we talked about healing, wounds, uh, fire damage, crumbling... Winds of Magic. Anything else? Uh, Chaos Dawi, they're not confirmed for the base game, right? Yeah, no, not yet. Um, they're not confirmed for the base game yet, but we don't know who the pre... They said it's going to be a race pack for the uh, kind of early adopter bonus, I guess is the technical name for it. But... Any mention of battle map effects from, that come from capture points? Yeah, so I don't. I didn't highlight it as I was going through that battle, but... In, at least in the survival battles, holding the capture points will give you a little buff or debuff. Like, if I just quickly go back and show... I should not have closed that out. Here we go. So let's... I can switch back over and just show you briefly here. Um, so... Swap this. So you can see up here at the top, if I actually zoom in... Uh, okay, so up here at the top, you've got these three icons, um, and those are the three capture points, right? And you can see each one kind of shows what it gives you to a degree. I I, I didn't go over the specifics um, in this in this video, but it's like armor. Uh, this one is I think is melee attack and then leadership, right? So if you don't hold it, it gives you a debuff, and if you hold it, it gives you a buff in that category. Um, like for armor, you know, I think it was 15 armor debuff. If you didn't hold it, if you held it, you got a plus 15 armor buff, right? And same thing for the enemy. Like the enemy would get a 15 armor buff when they held it, and they would get debuffed when you held it, right? So on and so forth. So yeah, I do. Th I I don't know in domination if they'll give you stat buffs as well, or if it's just going to be you know getting supplies for reinforcements or or victory points like maybe you just like slowly accumulate victory points rather than supplies i don't know this is just speculation but i could see it potentially functioning in that way but yeah new multiplayer modes is definitely exciting hopefully we'll see more of that and uh yeah i'm very curious to see it in in terms of minor settlement battles sieges other things that hopefully will be shown soon but uh, definitely a lot to look at right now. A lot to look forward to. So if that's it for today, I think I'm going to hop off. But thank you all so much. It's been an absolute blast. 
really, really good stuff from Creative Assembly. Um, I mean, obviously way too early to make any kind of judgment on the game, certainly. Uh, we will have to wait until, um, yeah, we see more, but I am genuinely interested. I'm very excited. Thank you all so much for coming out. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now, but uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye now.